Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a scroll saw chainsaw. Now, just after Father's Day this year, uh, I posted a show fittingly, Dad Jokes. And that got me thinking about a project that I used to make years ago. And that would be a chainsaw. Now, I don't want you guys to get intimidated by the length of today's video. You're looking at it saying, holy crow, this is over half an hour long. But there are two segments in here. Um, I believe they are like 15 minutes long combined that show real-time scrollings for the guys out there who are beginners that want to see exactly how slow of a process this is. So you can just scan through those to get how to make the chainsaw without having to watch 15 minutes of videos. So don't be intimidated by the length of the video. Either way, let's get into the project and it all starts off with a little bit of three quarter inch material. Well, for years here on the show, you guys have seen me use something like this. It's a template for a saw handle. I use them for push sticks. I use them for jig handles. It's a tried and true design of a handsaw. And all I've done is trace it to make the template. And that's all you need to do is trace your handsaw onto a piece of three quarter inch thick stock. In this case, it's walnut for me. So what you're going to want to do though is at the top here, we're going to need to round off a little bit and we're going to leave an extension here that will stick out just a, an inch or so out from the end of your handle, but as well, it will be an inch and a half wide up here to give us something to attach our chain to at the end. Now this is not the main part of the show, so I'm not gonna get too into this on how to cut it and that sort of thing. It's a simple scroll saw cutting. So let me get this cut and then I'll come back and show you what we've got. And after some sanding and a quarter inch round over all the way around on both sides, you end up with a handle that looks like this. Now there's more to do to this piece, but for now we can put it aside. The next piece of stock that you're going to need is this. And what this is, for me, I'm using maple. It's a little harder cut, but I think it'll yield a better project. Um, poplar works, cherry, anything like that. But you need a piece that is an inch and a half by an inch and a half by 13 inches long. And the other thing that you're going to need in order to make the chain is a chain pattern. Now, if you don't have one, don't sweat it. You can head to my website, acutabovewoodworkings.com, hit the free pattern section and you can grab it there. So what we need to do first is we need to apply spray adhesive to the back of this. We're gonna give it a generous coating, allow it to tack up for three minutes, and then we're going to apply it to our wood. But the way that we're going to apply it is that our folded dotted line right here, our, our fold line, will get mounted right on the corner of our workpiece, of our blank. So just make sure that you get that lined up perfectly on the corner and attach your pattern to your stock. And with the pattern attached, we can now head over to the drill press. Now each one of these areas here this sort of thing right here, 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 on this side over here, the same thing. These are all interior cuts. And for each one of these, we're going to need to drill a blade entry hole, um, giving our scroll saw blade a way to get into the middle of that hole to drill it out. One thing I will caution you on, this is only a 3 32nd diameter bit. This is an inch and a half thick hard maple if you are overzealous with the pressure on your drill bit, you will cause deflection in that bit. So you do not want that. Just take it slow, let the drill bit do its job, and drill all the blade entry holes in both sides of the stock. Now one thing I will point out is you don't need to drill the second blade entry hole here. That solid line is a cut line. So that is going to bring you into this next area. So you only need to drill the entry holes on one side. So I'm gonna get the rest of these done and uh, I'll show you what we end up with. 
Okay, so all the blade entry holes are drilled and you can even see here that I've drilled an extra one at the end here and another one at the end here. We're gonna need those a little while later and I'll show you what to do with those when we get to that step. First things first, do you have a new blade in your saw? If you don't, stop what you're doing and get a new blade in there. Guys, these blades are consumables and if you don't have a good sharp blade for this, the project is not going to work. It's gonna fail miserably. So get a clean sharp blade in here. I'm using a number seven PGT blade, which is precision ground tooth. And they do an amazing job of cutting here. So another thing that you want to make sure of for this project is that your blade is square. If you are not sure how to do that, um, I suggest you check my show on squaring up the scroll saw blade that I posted a few months ago. I'll post a link to that down below in the description and you can check it out if need be. So at this point now, I'm gonna cut this one section here of the interior cut. I'm gonna do the cut in real time just to show you how painstakingly slow this process is. And for those of you that are new to scrolling and not sure what to expect, this will give you a good idea of what you're gonna be looking at. You really need to take your time and let the saw do the work. So here we go, let's get this first one cut out.
And that is one done. And I mean one. So you can see that it is a slow process. If it wasn't for the fact that this is hard maple, it might not have taken that long. Um, so if you're a little concerned about the time, although I don't know why you would be, or if for some reason you think this might be too tough of a cut for you to handle, you can always use a softer wood like poplar or cherry. But either way, I'm going to carry on. Uh, I don't think we need another video of this. I'm going to cut all of the rest of the interior cuts in the one side of this uh, chain, and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, and there we have all of our interior cuts on one side done. You now want to flip it 90 degrees to expose our other surface. Truth be told, on this one, I went through two full brand new blades. Um, I'm now going to replace another blade. I'm not even messing with it because I noticed it was cutting pretty slow there at the end. So we're going to put in a new blade into the saw and we're going to cut all of the interior cuts on our second side. Now, <clears throat> these second interior cuts will be a, a fair bit faster than what the first ones are because you're not cutting through the full girth of the inch and a half. In fact, you have quite a bit of it taken away, so it's not as much work for the saw as well the saw can use these holes uh, instead of just the kerf to clear the sawdust out of them. So I'm going to do another real-time cutting here just to give you an idea of what to expect and we will cut uh, one of the chain links here, cut all of the interior cuts in one of the links.
and I'm sure that you could see exactly how much faster that cut was due to the relief of these cuts and the blade not having to work so hard. So at this point in time, we can now get the other four interior cuts done on this side of our blank. And once we get that done, we can move on to the next step. And I'm going to show you what that is. And after quite a while, we have both planes cut. Now, it's now time to cut the perimeter. So pick a side, it doesn't matter which one, treat it as an interior cut. That's why we drilled the entry hole here and down here. So we don't need another video of it. The video is already long enough as it is. Hopefully if you weren't interested, you skipped ahead like what I suggested. So you just get the gist of how to make this project. But what I'm going to do is on one plane only, I'm gonna cut the entire perimeter of our piece. Remember to take it slow and let the curve of the blade clear the sawdust. So after a considerable amount of time, you end up with something that looks like this. Now, we're not done. We need to cut the other plane, but the problem is with this in here, if you try to cut the other plane, this is going to slide all over the place. You're just going to have a mess. So what we need to do is we're going to turn this sideways and using a couple blocks of wood, we are going to secure this in place. Um, I'm going to wrap this with clear packing tape. And by doing that, that will seal in our piece and keep it from sliding side to side. Once we get that done, we're going to repeat the process and cut all the way around the perimeter of the second plane. So once I get that done, I'll show you what we ended up with. And once you get all the cutting done, you end up with the core. Let me just see if I can pop this out of here. Well, there's one section. I uh, see we're not completely disconnected right there. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to take this over to the scroll saw and carefully trim that up just to separate this one piece. And this is what you end up with. Now it doesn't look much like a chain, but not to worry. We've got a little bit of hand work to do. So get yourself a handsaw. The scroll work is done. Uh, we now need to use a handsaw. Now what you need to do with the handsaw is remove these corner sections here to reveal your chain. So just carefully line up your handsaw and slowly and gently cut straight down through it. Now you don't want to go all the way through, you just want to go until you break the surface of the chain link. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, I'm all the way through on that side. You can then rotate it 90 degrees, just like this. And we'll do the same thing on this side. There we go. Now see how those just popped out? So we have this corner taken right out. We're gonna do that on all four corners. And when you get that done, I'll show you what you're looking at. Okay, so we have all of our corner pieces now cut off and what you'll end up with at this point is this sort of a thing. But at this point now, we need to separate our links. Before we do that, I'm just going to take a chisel and I'm going to clean up any of these saw marks that are here along our chain. Well, 
well, once you're happy with all the sanding and you've got something that looks like this, we still need to separate our links. While they're separated in between each link, there is a section right in here that's held still by a piece of stock. So using a rotary tool and a cutting bit, I'm just gonna get in here and nibble away until I can get the link separated. And with that now cut, our link will separate from the chain. You can see that there. And all we need to do now is get in here with a drum sander on our Dremel or our rotary tool or whatever you're using and just sand this flush in line with the chain as well as rounding off this little section. And then you can do the same thing on the interior of this piece. So let me get all of these separated and then I'll show you how to do the shaping. Now, as you go through your chain, once you get the inside shaped, you're going to find places that need some fine tuning. There is no magic formula. There is no secret fast way. It's just a matter of filing and sanding. Uh, I have some 180 grit sandpaper glued down to a piece of MDF that is three quarters of an inch wide. And that does a great job at tuning up uh, our little imperfections in our chain. Now, how much shaping you want to do is up to you. If you want to get in here with your sanding drum and maybe put a chamfer on the insides and the outsides of each link, that is 100% up to you. How much shaping and how much carving or what you want, everyone you want to call it, um, you do to your chain, the better off the results are. I mean, inevitably, you're going to nick the inside here while you're separating these. So a little bit of a chamfer on the inside and outside of each one of these links wouldn't hurt. So shape them as you see fit, put on some good music, relax, sand, file, have a good time with it, and I'll see you when you get your chain all shaped and finished. And depending on how much effort you want to put into it, you can really do some extensive shaping to get a beautiful chain. It's incredible to think that this was all one piece of maple not that long ago. But at this point now, it's time to attach our chain into our handle that we made earlier. So what we need to do is right here in the end, we're going to mark out a quarter inch wide slot. So we're just going to roughly place a mark here, right on the end. That might be a little high for my liking. You can see how technical this is. Right there, I think. And we will measure down one quarter of an inch, just like that. And we will place another mark right here. Now we want to attach this right about that area there. So we are going to round this off right at that mark. And that is approximately one and an eighth in from the end of your handle. But before we cut that, what we need to do is about a half an inch in from the end of our hole, we need to take this over to the drill press and we're going to drill a quarter inch hole right through this. Now we'll drill from the bottom and we'll make it a stopped hole so that it doesn't show at the top, but we will drill it so that it's about a 3 sixteenths to a quarter of an inch down from the bottom. And once we get that hole drilled, we can cut our quarter inch slot. And with that slot cut, we can install our chain. So all we need to do is place a little drop of glue inside here. We can place our chain inside the slot and then using a little piece of quarter inch dowel, just drive that home there. And there you go. 
Now all we need to do is sand this little nub of dowel down flush, and there you have it. There is your chainsaw. Isn't that cool? And there you have it. A chainsaw. And guys, this project is an absolute blast to make. It's a load of fun. It looks great. And the fact that it was made out of one piece of maple, this chain, is very impressive. The fact that the majority of the cutting on it was done on the scroll saw makes it even that much more impressive. Now, I know that there was some real-time scrolling videos here in the show today, and those were put in place for those of you who are interested in making this um, to show you exactly how excruciatingly slow it is cutting one uh, and a half inch thick maple with a scroll saw. It is crazy, crazy slow, but that is the whole process of it. So just take your time and let the saw do the work. Um, it's, you're not going to be pumping these out in mass production, guys. This is not a quick project. And I'm not going to pretend for one instant that it is. It is a very time-consuming project. It took me about uh, half of the afternoon, or the most of one afternoon, to do the cutting of it. And then the shaping pretty much took me four to five hours to shape the entire chain, both using the uh, power carver, or if you have a Dremel tool, to knock off all the sharp edges, and then using 180 grit sandpaper, and then 220 after that, to sand and shape each one of the links until I got them the way that I want them. Now, if you're not interested in doing something that far, if you just want to leave them kind of squarish, then do it. It's your project, so do it as you wish. But either way, guys, don't discount this project. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. It's a great way to hone your sanding. It's a great way to hone your scrolling skills. And it's a great way to learn patience and just sit back and relax and do the cutting at a nice, slow, easy pace. Honest to goodness, it's a great way to spend a few hours in your shop. So give this one a try. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you've enjoyed the content. Um, I haven't made one of these in a long, long time, and I'd actually forgotten how much work it was, but I also forgot how much fun it was. So for me, it was just a win-win situation, and I'm glad that I was able to bring it to you. If you want the pattern for this one, both the handle and the chain, just head over to my website, a cut above woodworkings. Dot com. Click on the free pattern section and there you're going to find a photo of the finished product. You're going to find the accompanying tutorial video being today's show as well you're going to find the pattern. Any of the patterns that I offer on this channel guys, they are all available there. So you just got to drop by the website, download them, they're all free. Take what you want, take what you need, share them if you wish. Have a blast. That's what they're there for. That's the purpose they were designed. That's the purpose that I put them on the website. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click that bell and then you're not going to miss notifications of future episodes of the show. Once again, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed today's project. I hope you're going to give this a try for yourself, for you guys out there that love your scroll saws. And honestly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.